hey guys welcome back to my channel it's Selem here as you can see I'm, I made such a lovely bride <laughs> anyway guys this is a video where I show you guys or I take you guys through the making of my wedding dress although this is the part one of the video where I show you how I made the bodice of the dress um, so yeah definitely stay tuned for the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys leave a lovely comment at the end. Subscribe if you haven't already. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. <laughs> so for starters, I did a princess that postia. I drafted a princess that postia for the bodice of my dress. I didn't want to do a corset. I wanted something that I'll be comfortable in, something I can really, really dance in. And something that would take um, wouldn't take as much time especially when it came to doing the bodies so I decided to do a princess that bustia I have a detailed tutorial on how to draft cut and sew a princess that bustia so um, I have actually I actually have vid videos like up to five to ten videos on princess that bustia so if that's something you're interested in you want to have it you want to see a detailed tutorial I'm going to leave the link in the descri description box down below this is a vlog so um i'm not making a detailed tutorial of this but you're definitely going to learn a scene or two from watching this video especially if you have a good knowledge of sewing already okay so once i drafted it i just went ahead to just um you know mark my actual measurements i added two inches allowance um i connected the points for both my shape and my bust area and then i just basically tried to um you know cut the dress to give it the actual shape and you know style that i wanted the bodies to have okay so for the bodies i'm doing an illusion neckline like a very plunging neckline that goes all the way to the half length so that's why as you can see right now i'm cutting it all the way down to the half length and then that part that i cut out i'm going to replace it with a yoke okay so this right here is what i'm, go what I'm going to use to cut the yoke now for the yoke i'm using uh, a skin tone too for the back, I also opted for a very low illusion back. Um, I'm also going to have a yoke at the back as well with the um, skin tone too. So as you can see, I've written yoke on the pieces where I'm going to, you know, be cutting the yoke with. <clears throat> now moving on to the fabric. I'm using a Mikado silk fabric. If you haven't seen the video where I showed you guys all the things I bought for my wedding dress, um, I'm going to leave the link in the description box down below so you guys can see all the items, you know, I got for this dress. So the Mikado silk fabric is what I'm using and I had used my lining to draft, you know, the 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 um, pattern for the princess that was here. So now what I'm doing is I'm simply just placing the lining pattern on top of the Mikado silk fabric and then I'm just cutting, um, you know, um, cutting the Mikado silk to match the um the lining pattern i didn't leave any allowance that's because i'm only going to be using a um uh what's it called now a cloth gum to um gum the mikado silk that's why i didn't want to um i didn't want to leave any allowance i wanted this just to be you know just be the way it was supposed to be <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, guys. Anyway, this is the cloth gum I mentioned that I'm using right now to gum. I'm using it to stick on the Mikado silk fabric on the wrong side. This is going to give it structure and make sure that everything stays sturdy. Uh, so once I once I just um, gummed all the pieces, I simply just cut out any excess from the um, from the pieces. Now this is the illusion, um, this is the skin tone tool that I'm going to be using. So what I did, what we did was I just placed the yoke pattern on top of the skin tone tool and then I'm just cutting, you know, following that pattern. Again, I didn't leave any allowance because I wanted the, um, I wanted the, the tool because the tool stretches. So I didn't want it to stretch and become too big for the front yoke. I did not double the skin tone and tool but for the back i doubled it and that's because because the dress is a ball dress i'm going to be wearing a petticoat underneath it's going to have strong net it's going to have lining it's going to be very very full and heavy i wanted the back to have um you know more weight to it so it could carry the the you know the skirt part of the dress 
So these are the pieces for the front and for the back of the bodies. I've already cut them out and I've gone ahead to just join, you know, the um, pieces together, the front pieces together. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put the, I'm going to go ahead and just iron, you know, the pieces. Make sure that you, um, you know, create notches along that seam allowance and then you open it and iron it flat. Also, I used a, a piece of lining to iron it when I was ironing the front so that um, it doesn't burn, neither does my um, you know, iron create any stain. I'm going to go ahead and put the yoke in between the fabric and the lining and then sew it so that it's nice and neat. So when you're um, inserting a yoke with a very plunging neckline, it's slightly different from inserting a yoke with a regular, um, you know, sweetheart neckline. The reason is because of the plunging neckline can get a bit confusing when you're inserting it. So the way I'm doing it now is the way you're supposed to do it. So try to join the straight parts first before you, you know, join the parts that is very, very, very deep. That's the plunging part. So try to join the parts that are a bit straight first and then you can now join the plunging part And this is what it looks like once we've joined it very nice and neat as you can see now i'm taking breast cups two breast cups actually i'm using a size um 40 breast cup although my boss circumference is 35 i decided to go up because i wanted you know very good padding for the bust area and then i'm using two breast cups and i just went ahead to just sew them together after sewing them together i went ahead to create a dart at the bottom part this made the breast cup very full so if you want your breast cup to be very full, it's important that you create a dart on it. But if you don't want it to be too full, you just want nice padding, you can you don't have to create that um, dart. So once I was done with that, I tried to see where I wanted to place it. Okay, and I saw that I had a bit of ex the excess breast cup by one side. So I decided to just cut or trim that side out so that when I put it inside, everything is everything sits nice and you know good. Now I've trimmed it, it looks good, it looks fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and just put it inside the, um, you know, the bodies that's in between the fabric and the lining. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just sew along that plunging neckline. And as I'm sewing it, I'm also, you know, catching the breast cup that's inside as well. And this is what it looks like once we're done. This is what the back looks like as well. Nice and neat. Now for the back piece, since I doubled the net, I just went ahead to just use that same color of thread as the color of the two. I used that for the thread, the same color. And I just went ahead to just sew the neck of the two pieces of the two together and then I turned it to the right side 
and then just inside to just iron it flat so that the seam is hidden inside okay and once i've ironed it this is what it looks like now i'm just going to place it right sides facing with the um the back piece of the the back piece of the mikado silk and then i'm also placing the lining on top of it so the tool is basically basically sandwiched in between the fabric and the lining and i'm going to go ahead to just sew all the pieces together make sure that you pay attention to the curves as you're sewing make sure that you curve the pieces or you twist the pieces that needs to be twisted because when you're working with curves you know and you have to twist some some pieces and then leave some straight but i'm sure you guys can do this so once you're done or once i was done this is what i had i just wanted to just sew the sides as well closed and this, this, are, this is what the back these are what the back pieces look like and i'm just placing the front piece on top of the back pieces and then i'm just joining the shoulders together Once I was done joining the shoulders, I went ahead to just shape in the sides. I shaped it with my actual measurement so it's nice and fitted on my body. This is what the back looks like as well. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to um, cut under the um, petals because if you look at this one that I haven't cut, some of the leaves are like can you see guys some of the leaves are sticking up so they are not on the net they are just sticking up like this so i'm trying to go under the leaf so that i don't burn you know this design but then i get to now cut out all of the net so i'm just going under like this under like that you know so that i don't burn the petals because i've been burning the petals in the previous ones <laughs> but i'm learning okay i'm learning to do it better now look at this one when i put it on my body this is what it looks like see just imagine it on skin tone too it's going to look really really lovely so when i'm done like sewing all of them what i'm going to do is i'm going to beat them with crystal beads i'm going to use the needle and thread and beat them i want to beat them like this before i stick them to the skin tone too so it's easier for me to work with so it's easier for me to be like this <laughs> so it's easier for me to be like this um compared to when i put it on the tool and then start beading it because that would be like more stressful so i'm going to once i'm done soldering them i'm going to beat them before i now stick them to the net so Yay! It's going well so far. So if you haven't watched my video where I bought all the things I, I use for my wedding dress, please check it out. It's very important. So um, I got this lace, white lace, and I got it specifically to cover out the designs. I really, really love the designs. So I got it to cover out the designs so that I can use for, you know, the sleeve and bodice area of my wedding dress. So I'm just using a soldering iron now to just cover out the design from the lace. Now, I actually did this for the entire lace. I got about one and a half yards of the lace. I did this for the entire lace. Some of these designs I beaded with crystal beads. Hand beaded, actually, guys. It took forever. <laughs> I hand beaded it and then I used it for the bodice area of my um, dress. But the rest of it, I used it for my veil. I'm going to upload a tutorial on the veil soon. Now, this is the sleeve of my um, dress. I actually did not double it because the net is actually a very good one. So um, I'm just placing, um, you know, the sleeve on this um, nylon bag so that it doesn't, the glue that I'm going to use doesn't affect the table. Now these are those cutouts. I already beaded them. I didn't, I don't have a zoomed in version of this, but I've already beaded them. Guys, it took forever. I literally hand beaded this thing. It took months because I had to do other things. It was like the most stressful part of you know making this dress and beading this these designs one by one and i use those tiny crystal beads so what i'm doing now is i'm just basically um using that uhu glue and i'm using it to just 
stick the um, designs on the on the sleeve that's what i'm just basically doing i did that for both sleeves and it's important that you stick whatever designs you want to stick on your sleeve before you sew it it's easier and it helps it to be even on both sides now moving on to the bodies of my dress i'm just going to go ahead and just insert my zipper as you can see i haven't done the skirt part of this dress so when i inserted the zipper to the bodies i actually left the bottom part of the zipper to just dangle so that when i am done with the skirt part i can always just join it to this one and then use the same zipper now for the button loops i'm just going to go ahead and just join it to the next part of um you know the dress And then I just took this piece of fabric and then I just used it, I just kind of wrapped it with the um, tool and then I sewed that closed. I did that because I wanted the buttons that I'm going to sew on the tool to have a solid place to sit on. Okay, so sewing the buttons directly on the tool could cause the tool to tear because you know when you're using needle and thread and it's tool, you're going to have to, um, you know, try to tie it, the thread very tight and all of that and that could cause the net to tear. So I had to use that piece of fabric there so that when I sew the, um, the buttons on it, the buttons have a very, very solid place to sit on, okay? Now this is my sleeve. I've gonna have to just stick the designs like I told you and then I'm just going to go ahead and just, you know, sew the sleeve closed so that I can now attach it to, you know, the armhole of my bodice. And this is what it looks like when I just wore it on my hand, on my arm. And then I'm going to just fix it on the bodice of, or the armhole of my dress. Guys, this is what it looks like so far. This is the bodice done, complete. As you can see, you can see the beads, um, the lace cutouts, the beaded lace cutouts on the sleeve. I really love how it looks, guys. Um, look at how this one is, very fine. I love this particularly and the skin the skin tone nets the skin tone too matches my skin perfectly so basically I'm going to go ahead and just beat some more of the lace cutouts and then place all of here cover this part cover all of here so that it's just a very tiny um you know line you can see of my skin okay so yeah I haven't done the back you can see the zipper is just dangling i haven't done the back so yeah but i think i'm going to hold the waist the waist is still very loose i'm going to hold the waist like so it has to be tight like corset tight like i have to make it very 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 tight so yeah that's basically what i'm looking at so yeah i like how it looks guys look at my face i'm so stressed so tired I've been working on this dress all day and it just feels good to see that I've made a lot of progress. Next week, I'm going to upload the final part of the Waking My Wedding Dress video. So guys, definitely stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already.